What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. My name is Briggs, and I like to talk. A lot, actually. Really. Some people golf, some people paint, others cure deadly diseases. I talk a lot. Today we're going to talk about a city that's been all over the news, Baltimore, Maryland. It's right here, in case you don't know, about an hour or so up the Baltimore-Washington Parkway from Washington, D.C. So Baltimore has been getting some bad press lately. Things have been brought up in the news, painting the Charm City in a really bad light. Yeah, that's their nickname, the Charm City. The thing is this, they have their challenges and they have their issues, but they aren't the worst in anything. Every city has problems, but Baltimore's aren't as bad as they're making it seem these days. Most dangerous, they came in third. Poor they came in sixth, the worst schools, they were only 16th, and the worst all-around city, they came in 13th. So they're not the absolute worst. They're not doing great. They have some issues, but you know, they didn't even make the top 10 and overall worst. Baltimore is filled with good people that care about their city. Talk to someone from Baltimore about Baltimore, and I promise you, they will tell you it's a great city. What is going on in Baltimore in the news is what they did to Chicago a few years back. They made Chicago seem like it was like this war zone. They have some bad things, and they had some murders, but they also have 10 times as many people is the next city on the list. Basically, they're making Baltimore seem far worse than it is. Baltimore is a historic city with a lot to offer. Over the last several years, they've become a tech city. In 2018, Forbes magazine ranked Baltimore as the fourth hottest tech spot in the country. So that's really good news. Bright future there. But enough of all that. Today's list is about the weird things in Baltimore. Stats and rankings are nice, but more interesting are the strange happenings, places, and people of Baltimore. And now the disclaimer. If you're from Charm City or know about Baltimore, you've probably heard some of these, if not all of these. 90% of the people watching this right now haven't. Keep that in mind before you leave your comment. All right, so why don't you grab a pit beef and a natty bow and watch my top 10 strangest things about Baltimore. Number 10, streetlights. The very first streetlights were established here in Baltimore. In 1817, it was discovered that hydrogen gas lamps could be used to keep the streets lit at night. Hydrogen gas lamps were used until electricity was, you know, sometime later. They used to have a dude that would walk around the streets lighting these things up every single night. Good thing we figured out electricity. You'd have to have an army of lamp lighters to cover Baltimore these days. It's huge. Then, of course, you'd have the hooligans going around blowing out all the lamps at night. Sort of like taggers. I guess they would be blowers. What if they made it a felony and you got arrested for it and it goes down on your record as if you're a felonious blower? Nobody wants that on their record. That's disgusting. Gaslights in Baltimore have been gone for 62 years now. The gaslight era in Baltimore came to an end on August 14th, 1957, when then mayor Thomas L.J. D'Alessandro Jr. extinguished the last gas lamp in Little Italy. Number nine, dentistry. Baltimore is very big on teeth. The world's first dental school was established in 1840. Some say Doc Holliday even studied here for some time before graduating in Pennsylvania. If you aren't sure who that is, he's an old West gunslinger and friend of Wyatt Earp. He was one of the men at the OK Corral, and it's said that he fired the first shot. So yeah, that's interesting. Baltimore is very proud of their dentistry. You know that because they got the Museum of Dentistry located in the city. I bet that place is just packed with people every weekend, especially kids. George Washington's wooden dentures are in the Museum of Dentistry. Did any of you hear that when you were in school, George Washington had wooden teeth. Well, he had several pairs. They were made out of varying combinations of rare hippopotamus ivory, human teeth, and metal fasteners. They weren't made of wood. The teeth would easily turn brown without regular care or cleaning, and their occasional nasty appearance may have first got the ball rolling with the rumor that he had wooden teeth. Number eight, the six pack. The six pack, we're talking about six pack of beer, not something I haven't had since I was 20. Anytime you go buy a six pack of beer, you can thank the good people of Baltimore for this. At the time, in the 1940s, the National Bohemian Brewing Company, now Paps Brewing Company, started selling beers by the half dozen. Since it seemed that four were too few and eight seemed to be a too much, they decided to just go with six per pack. I wonder if they did any research on that or just guessed. Did they do like a study with different control groups? One group was given eight beers, one was given four beers, and then one was given a a placebo of non-alcoholic beer, then they'd have to go bowling. And if they did really, really bad, you knew they didn't drink any beer. If they did really, really good, you know they had too many. And if they were just kind of mediocre, they only had four beers. You know, you ever notice that bowling is the only sport that being drunk actually helps your performance. That and hitting a knuckleball in baseball. Number seven, the Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens is an NFL football team that was hijacked from Cleveland, Ohio. The city of Baltimore stole the Browns football team from the city of Cleveland by making a sweetheart deal to the then owner of the Browns, Art Modell. 
He relocated to Baltimore, basically. After threats of legal action from the city of Cleveland and the fans, a compromise was reached in early 1996 that allowed Modell to establish the Baltimore Ravens as a new franchise while retaining the contracts of all the Browns players. So you got to take all the people and stuff like that. He just couldn't take much else. The Browns intellectual property, including the team name, logos, colors, training facility, and history, were kept in a trust and the franchise was regarded by the NFL as suspended, with a new team to be established by 1999 either through expansion or relocation. The Browns were announced as an expansion team in 1998 and they resumed playing 1999 and I've been happy ever since. Well, not really because they've sucked up until like last year, almost that whole time until like last year, they have sucked horribly and I'm a fan and I'm still a fan even though they've sucked that long. As you can imagine, there's a lot of things wrong in my head. But back to the Ravens. Many people don't know it, but the mascot actually dates back almost 175 years to 1845 when Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven was published. Great poem, great piece of literature. Even if you're not into it, read The Raven someday. Piece of art. Anyway, since the famous writer died on a park bench in Baltimore, he was poisoned. It only felt necessary for the Raven to represent the city. Nevermore. Number six, the USS Constellation. Docked in the Inner Harbor is the last Civil War ship that's still floating today. The Constellation was commissioned on 28 July, 1855. And after 100 years of service in 1955, she was decommissioned. And she had been decommissioned in 1933 and then recommissioned in 1940, just in case there's any ship nerds out there about to give me an angry comment. Anyway, by this time, she had seen some better days. So after they completed a restoration process, she was taken to her permanent berth, Constellation Dock, Inner Harbor, Pier 1. On July 4th, she was designated a national landmark on 23 May 1963 and in 1994 it was condemned as an unsafe vessel so like I said this ship has seen some good days and some bad days. The Constellation was put into dry dock at Sparrow Point in 1996 and a $9 million rebuilding and restoration project was undertaken and completed in July of 1999. In an attempt to safeguard the wood, they kind of painted it this fiberglass paint. Now it's like got this weird aqua blue color to it. It's kind of strange, but hey, that's what they went with. As of 2015, the organization responsible for the ship's maintenance enlisted local inmates for repair and cleanup on the ship. I wonder if any of those inmates are flown blowers. Number five, Baltimore Airport. The Baltimore Airport is an interesting one to say the least. Actually, strange is a better word. The full name of the airport is the Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport, but most people just call it the Baltimore Airport or BWI. Since the airport can be pretty stressful, BWI offers many amenities like spas, a gym, a meditation room, as well as hiking and biking trails. Really, hiking and biking trails, all within the airport. It's not just nearby, like in some woods near there, it's like surrounding the airport, like right on the, it's in the airport property. It's weird. I've been through this airport a couple times and it's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. They only see like 250 flights a day. To give you an idea how small that is, O'Hare in Chicago sees about a thousand a day. Atlanta and Dallas see in the 900s. Los Angeles is LAX. They see 750. Kind of small. I thought it'd be much bigger. That's weird. Number four, railroad drama. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad is the oldest railroad in the country. I hate the word railroad because it's like a tongue twister to me. Anyway, the B&O Railroad is so special, it even got a spot in Monopoly. Always got to get all four of the railroads. Always. The B&O line was a major part of the Western expansion. B&O started service in 1830. Things were going smooth until violence broke out in 1877 during the Great Railroad Strike when the B&O Company tried to lower the wages of the railroad, railroad, rail workers. Damn it. Of the rail workers. Between the workers and National Guard, war kind of broke out. Ten people were killed and some of the railway had been burned. <laughs> I guess they start burning things. Anyway, isn't that like the first thing you learn in business school? Don't lower the wages of current employees. Bad things happen when you do that. Anyway, ten people were killed and I promise you not one of them was in the meeting where they decided to lower the wages. Number three, John Hopkins. John Hopkins is a very prestigious private research university located in Baltimore. The university was named after John Hopkins. I say that in case the name didn't tip you off that it was named after a dude named John Hopkins. Anyway, he was an entrepreneur who had many ties to the b Railroad. At his death, Hopkins donated his fortune of $7 million to fund the hospital and university in the area. At the time, his fortune would have converted to today's money about $150 million. So he gave him a good chunk of change. Because of this great honor, with the donation, the hospital and university were built in his name in 1876, just three years following his death. The good news is, he wasn't in on that meeting about lowering the wages, and he wasn't the dude that called the National Guard in to crack some skulls, so he was a decent dude, I guess. 
Number two, the Great Baltimore Fire. In 1904, Baltimore experienced a horrific fire which was named the Great Baltimore Fire. Is it my imagination or does like every major city have a great fire in their history? I mean, I get it. They had a lot of wood buildings back in the day, but were they like using kerosene-soaked newspaper as insulation or something? This fire raged for two days in February of 1904, and it took 1,200 firefighters, both professional and volunteers, from the surrounding counties to keep it under control. 140 acres of the city were destroyed. 3,500 residents were left unemployed. Amazingly, no one died, but the damage totaled about $150 million, which converted to today's money is about almost $4 billion, 3.84. That's amazing. That's a lot. What's really amazing is nobody died. I would have at least expected one person would have died. Like the guy drinking moonshine all day that was lighting off fireworks to celebrate Independence Day five months early. He should have died. And number one, the telegraph. The electric telegraph was the first ever text messaging device. The very first telegraph was invented in 1774 and could only be used between two rooms. This wasn't very useful. I mean, it was just the next room. What was that good for other than sending a message to your wife? Bring me another natty bow. The Orioles are an extra innings. I mean, that's about it. But... It wasn't until 1844, after many revisions, that Samuel Morris was able to make an electric telegraph travel 44 miles from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore. Samuel Morris was also the inventor of Morse code. If you don't know what the Morse code is, congratulations, you're probably under the age of 30. I learned the Morse code when I was in the Army. Don't know why. I never used it once. Well, except I used it to tap, you're a dick, every night for a month on the wall between me and the dick that lived in the next room. God, he was a dick. Baltimore was essentially the birthplace of the telegraph. All right, so that's my top 10 strangest things about Baltimore. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of it. Um, don't forget all the links below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And there's a link below for my podcast. If you guys are into podcasts, that's down there. I'm still working my way through it and learning, but it's down there. I'll leave a link. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other. <laughs>